Okay, you guys, what is up? The king of lightning is here today to do JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders Episode 2 Review. Now, this week's episode, first of all, you guys can look down in the description box down below on Crunchyroll.com to view the episode. That's number one. Number two, I'm thinking about doing an overview of the past two parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, part one and part two. Because a part two being my favorite part, I'm sorry, right? Even though part three is, is good, I love part two, all right? You can't beat, yo, you can't beat cars, you can't beat Wham, you just can't beat these dudes. I love them. And again, as I said before, I prefer Joseph, because uh, I've never gotten to part four of JoJo's. I've only read part one, two, and three. And out of those three, my favorite so far is Joseph Jolston. So, Jonathan is, you know, noble and cool, and Jotaro's a dick, but... And even though I'm a dick, I don't know, it's just that there's something about Joseph where I'm like, yo, like, he's awesome, right? He's the enigma. So, I probably will do an uh, overview of parts one and two later on, either, like, two weeks from now, or, so you know, like, sometime in the future, okay? Let's see about that. Now... When it comes to this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, again, Part 3, Stardust Crusaders. First of all, Dio Brandon. Now, even though he's not a main focus right now, because the main focus was Noriaki and JoJo and Noriaki's new st and Noriaki Stan uh, higher upon Green. The thing here is that I gotta mention Dio because Dio is Dio, and Dio, I love how like he's talking. I think to himself or to people like we can't really see. And he's talking about how if he didn't have Jonathan Joseph's body, he would have died. Because his body, because his head by itself couldn't live that long. For like 100 years under the sea. Probably not, at least. Also, he's talking about how he can feel the essence of the Jolsters and how he knows that they know that he's around. And the entire time... You can mainly see, like, portions of his torso, you can see his legs, but you can't see his face. But you can see this dude all posed off and shit, like, like the way they roll in JoJo's, man. Like, mm. I'm like, yo! And these dudes are straight up posed off, man. That's what they do, right? They like the poses. Like, mm. I'm like, yo, JoJo's, chill. But... It's Dio. And knowing what he does, I'm like, oh, I, people. <sighs> Dio Rando is here, man. And this dude is ready. To the point where he's actually manipulating other Stan users to actually uh, do his bidding. Because it's explained by Joseph at the end of the episode. Where Jotaro, well, he's talking to, to like Do Jotaro about the reason why Noriaki is serving Dio, and then he like moves up his hair, and then we see like, this thing right here. So there's, so he, he's using some kind of like parasite thing to control people. So you know, Dio Brando for the fucking win. Now, excuse me for the motherfucking win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dio Brando for the motherfucking win. Now. Moving on, first of all, animation, on point, lovely, beautiful, pacing, fast as always, no doubt about it. Uh, character progression, character introduction, mainly, it was again, it was Noriaki and his character in introduction, him being a new transfer student, uh oh, it's always something odd about the new transfer student, yeah, especially in the middle of the school year, especially, that's the way, I've seen so many series where in comes the new guy and oh shit oh the new guy's doing some crazy stuff so his abilities which again his stand is the higher upon green a uh, very unique stand which actually has more range than jotaro stand however it prefers to actually be inside people and it can control people from within 
via that method. And the fact that Noriaki knows what his stand prefers clearly shows that his that him and his stand have a better bond, have a stronger bond, have a stronger relationship than Jojo and his stand. Because I don't think that Jojo knows what his stand prefers. Where Noriaki does know that. So it still does signify that Jojo, when it comes to his stand, he has a long way to go to mastery. However, because his stand is so powerful, because his stand is abnormally powerful, he can beat people like Noriaki, who have more quote-unquote experience with their stand. Now, when it comes to the overall story progression, we made a lot, clearly, because of the pacing. I mean, normally pacing is going to tie in a story progression a lot of times, where if you have fast pacing, you're going to wind up making a lot of leeway into this actual story. And because of that reason, in this episode, we end off with the introduction and the defeat of a character who is quite significant, Noriaki. And now we're starting to learn things about him and his ties to Dio and like this thing on his forehead and so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to the animation, let me go back here. There is something in the animation that I love a lot. I really do like it a lot. Where in which it's like the comic book style kanji that come out of nowhere. Like, for example, when you have Noriaki and you and he's watching Jojo and as he's walking down the stairs and he's being packed by all these girls. And when he's looking at him, you can see, like, the menacing kanji, like, menacing, 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 menacing. The same thing happened when Jotaro was actually looking over the body of the nurse who was just injured because of his own actions, quote-unquote, by Noriaki. And how you can see, like, the menacing kanji, like, just <laughs> on the side of the panel. And I'm like, yo, like, that's, it's, it's hilarious. Because it's very comic book style, but it's very rare that I see this in a lot of uh, ongoing anime. So, I love that. I really do. So, that being said, alright, the episode overall. First of all, I do like that Jotaro, he actually did show some compassion to his mom. He says, mom, you know, you look a little bit pale. Is everything okay? And that was good. I'm like, oh, finally, there we go. Yeah, seriously. Digging around too much with your moms. And, he, and his mom, again, like, it's a little bit iffy there because mom is a little bit too infatuated with the son. It's like, well, like, like, you should, you know, tone it down, mom. Like, really tone it down. Like, you're here, but you need to be way down here. Also, I do like the fight between Joseph, I'm sorry, Jotaro and Noriaki. Very good fight. Especially the ending of that fight. The ending of that fight was like, whoa. Because this dude, he just grabbed the neck. <laughs> yeah, he just grabbed the neck. And then you can clearly see the effect on Noriaki. Blood. Because again, the direct contact of the stance also affects the user. And then he just, while his neck is being grabbed, just, yeah. Beat down session, and then finally with the uppercut, yo, on some like Luigi shit on Super Smash Bros, like, ding! and I'm like, yo, over, over. So that was good. That was very, very good. All right, props to that fight. Like from Jump Street, you could tell that there was a lot of tension between uh, Noriaki and. Uh, Joe Taro. You can tell that from Jump Street. So overall, the episode, I'm going to give it a rating of a great, I thought it was a great episode. I liked it a lot. And I will see you guys later. It's the King of Lightning. Be sure, of course, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace! Have a nice day.